This is a video on neuronal facilitation. In order for two neurons to communicate, they send neurotransmitters to each other, but the strength can be controlled using inhibition and facilitation. Today we will talk about facilitation. The communication between two neurons happens between the synapses in a very small space called the synaptic cleft. We will first discuss neuronal communication without facilitation to get a baseline understanding. There are a few key players here, potassium channels, calcium channels, glutamate receptors, calcium ions, glutamate, and potassium ion. This communication can occur with any neurotransmitter, but in this scenario, we will be using glutamate. In the event of an action potential, the dendrite terminal depolarizes, causing voltage-gated calcium channels to open, and for an influx of positively charged calcium ions to flow in. Calcium is important in the triggering process that releases the vesicles. For simplicity, we will not be discussing the full process here. Vesicles then bind to the membrane of the dendrite, allowing a release of their neurotransmitters, of glutamate in this instance. Glutamate flows out of the synaptic cleft and binds to the glutamate receptors in the postsynaptic neuron, the purple neuron in this instance. This triggers the opening of the channels. This would then allow an influx of positively charged ions to flow into the cell, depolarizing it and possibly causing an action potential. After releasing the neurotransmitters, the vesicle will close and move away from the synaptic cleft. Cal positively charged calcium ions that have already flowed into the cell have now depolarized the neuron far enough to reach the threshold of voltage-gated potassium channels, which will now open, allowing an efflux of potassium ions. When potassium flows out of the cell, it again changes the membrane potential, causing the cell to repolarizing the cell membrane to the threshold needed for the calcium channels to open is no longer met and calcium channels close. No more calcium can flow in, which will in turn no longer trigger the release of vesicles. The new membrane potential will also trigger the potassium channels to close, and the neuron is brought back to its resting state. Okay, now we will introduce facilitation. In facilitation, we will talk about another receptor, a metabotropic receptor. In this instance, our metabotropic receptor is sensitive to serotonin. We will also need a facilitatory neuron. The facilitating neuron will also experience the same action potential membrane change and all that stuff that will eventually release the neurotransmitters. This neuron will release the neurotransmitter serotonin. Serotonin is released from the facilitating neuron. Once they bind to the receptor, the metabotropic receptor, a G-protein cascade follows. This leads to the creation of a second messenger, which will then phosphorylate the potassium channel so that it cannot open and its remains closed. This time when the action potential arrives to the neuron, the calcium channels will open normally and release vesicles. But this time the normal threshold is met potassium channel to open. It is unable to due to its change in conformation from the G protein cascade. This maintains the depolarized state, allows, allowing for calcium to continue flowing in and the vesicles to keep coming and dumping more neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. This greater release of neurotransmitters causes more glutamate receptor channels to open, causing a greater influx of positively charged ions, therefore causing a, great, a stronger signal.